In the film, your co-star Emily Blunt swoons over Prince Charming, but which of the cast were you most charmed to be working with? This is a very much a fantasy film and a fairy tale where, you know, there's giants and beanstalks and stuff like that. But I sort of feel like the only part of the film which isn't believable is that Emily Blunt would leave me for Chris Pine. Of course. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, ridiculous, yeah. right? I was hearing like booze it's in the audience. crazy. <laughs> like, people are like, oh, come on. No one leaves this for that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, who was I swooned by in the car? Well, all of them really. I have a real soft spot for Christine Baranski, who plays the stepmother. She was great fun every day. It feels like watching a theatre show and actors work differently on stage. What was it closest to for you? Well, it's very much like a film because you're, you know, you're on a set with, you know, there is, there's no, there's no audience there and, and things like that. So in, in, in that sense, it's very, very different. But then there are moments in the film where you're just, you are sort of performing more than you would because. Uh, there's a song in the film uh, called It Takes Two, which is a duet with me and Emily, which there are moments in that where I, I, I really felt like this is great to have the best of both worlds. Yeah, you sing that with Emily. So how much did you guys rely on each other? I would love to say that we worked really hard mm. on our chemistry, and but it just sort of, it's unquantifiable really. It just sort of happened and we just, we were just there, you know, and I, I felt lucky every day to share scenes with her. She is such a brilliant actress. I was expecting a lot of CG in the magic woods. How did you keep up the magic when filming in the muddy English countryside? We had such an amazing design team on the film that it's hard to tell which are the woods and which is the soundstage really. The set that they built was probably like the size of a football pitch with real trees. They were like birds were living in the top of it because birds would fly in through the, the massive doors and they just think, oh, I'm in a wood. Then you'd look up and think, oh guys, You've got to get out before <laughs> this is all going to be pulled down at some point. A lot of school performances of the play end when the characters get their happy ever after. What's important about keeping the second act in the film? Well, I think what's important is that the happily ever after doesn't exist. Like, how old are you? 19. Right, there's some screw-ups coming your way. Okay. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. The screw-ups are coming for you. There's a song in Act 2 called No One Is Alone and essentially what that song says is that when those screw-ups happen and when they happen to you and they happen to people watching this and they happen to me and my, the rest of my life, you're going to feel like you might be completely on your own in the world and the truth is you're not. You're just not because you never are and you never will be and that's why it's really important. I don't know that it's particularly healthy to, to tell children that there is a perfect utopia that exists because mm. it doesn't and that's what the film sort of says really.